Kia ora and welcome to this second uh, Community Hui with Paula. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Prudence Walker um, and I uh, am a disabled person. I have worked in the disability sector for 15 years and for the last three and a half years have been the Chief Executive of the Disabled Persons Assembly of New Zealand. Before we kick off tonight, I would like to call on Taki for our karakia. Ah, tuia irunga, tuia iraro, tuia iroto, tuia iwaho, tuia nga hire nga tanga ta faikaha, ki anoho pai ai ki te whenua, ki anoho pai ai ki te ao, ki te ao marama, e tauana. I te tīmatanga ko te kore na te kore ko te pō, tifa tifa ki te pō, Kakarawi ki te pō, ki te pō nui, ki te pō aroa, ki te pō kere kere kāpiti ora, ki te whai ao, ki te ao marama, ti hei, mauri ora. Ko te ere whare e tū nei, ko te mana whaikaha, te nākwe. Ko te papa e takoto nei, ko te tiriti o waitangi, te nā hoki koe. Ke wai ho kia kōrua e kawe nai ngā mātā pono, a kui a kōro mā pērā i tiko tātai ki runga i te marae. He kore tātai e wareware ko te kaupapa nui ko ngā tāngata kai paikaha. Kia pua wāi ki rotu i tēnei ao huri huri, kia paka kiko kiko, kia paka tina nai ngā moi moi a i ngā wawata. Kia tau wāi ki te ngā kau, kia tau wāi ki te tangata. Nā reira, i ngā hāpuri, O tēnā takiwā, o tēnā rohe, o tēnā puto te motu, nau mai, hara mai. Nau mai, hara mai ki tēnei kaupapa e tui tui nei ngā whakāro mo ngā tāngata whaikaha. Kia noho pai ai ki te whenua, kia noho pai ai ki te ao. Engari, ko tēnei kaupapa, kāri mo te ngā kau ngā wari. Kāri mo te ngā kau e kore take nei ki tēnei. Engari mā te upoko pakaru, mā te upoko karawhiu. Ke tau wai te mana wa nui, ki te nei kaupapa. Ke paninu niha nei i ngā kaupapa, ko tau nei ki te whenua. Ano reira, e nei kupu, ahako he e te te kupu. He nui te kōrero, ka taku reo, e miha tira ki a kūtau i te nei ahi ai pō. Ka whiriwhiri nei ngā whakaro o tō tātau tumu whakarai. Au te mana tū ko i kia nei ko whaikaha. Me pehe tai te anga whakamua i te kiko ki whaka kiko kiko i ngā moi moi a a kia pua wai kia ora nei ki roti a tātai. Nō reira, te nei taku reo kia kūtau katoa ko hono tahi nei kia tātai hurino, hurino, te nā kūtau, te nā kūtau, a te nā tātai. Te aroha Te whakapono me te rangi marie, tātau, tātau e. Nō reira, tēnā kūtau, a tēnā kūtau, a tēnā kūtau. And it's also my pleasure for some of you who may know me and those that don't. My name is Taki Peke and I'm a member of Te Ao Marama and it's my privilege to open up a session of the forums uh, with Paula this evening. It's also my pleasure to um, start those foundations in the corridor uh, from a partnership stand view, and especially their tripartite approach that Whaka, Whaikaha um, is developing and enveloping uh, for the future sense. Their tripartite approach being to the forefront, enabling good lives, disabled people with the foundation of the Treaty of Waitangi. But from me, thank you once again for opening the sui. To everybody, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Back to Prudence, tēnā koe. Uh, kia ora, Taki. Uh, shortly, Paula, the Chief Executive of Awha Whaikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, will share with us uh, what Whaikaha have achieved in the next six months and what their priorities are going into the new year. But first of all, I, I just want to go over again in this session um, how you can have your questions answered. Um, and what to expect in uh, the second part, the, the Q&A. 
Uh, so I just need to let you know that this Zoom meeting is being recorded for people who aren't able to attend today. So if you do not want to appear on that recording, please feel free to turn off your camera. Um, uh, if you would also prefer your video, uh, sorry, your audio not to be captured, uh, or it is easier mm -hmm. in terms of accessibility for you, you can put your questions and comments in the chat box. Uh, so, of course, the other way that you can ask a question is to raise your hand, either physically or electronically, is I'll be able to keep on top of better if you're able to do that. Um, we have had a few questions that have been uh, put to Paula before this session, so we will start off the, with those after Paula has spoken. Um, if you're able to ensure that you do stay on mute, um, unless of course you're speaking, that will just help us um, manage the inputs for everyone, and we're looking forward to your questions and comments. As with last session, um, the chat function, the Zoom will remain open and the chat function open for 15 minutes after this session. Uh, and those questions will be collated and answered on the Faikaha website in the coming weeks. Now, just to note that um, we won't have time to be able to address questions about individual situations uh, today, uh, you can direct those to contact at faikaha.govt.nz, um, but we of course can answer general questions which may indeed answer your personal questions. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce Paula, who as we all know is the Chief Executive of Faikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People. Kia ora, Paula. Kia ora, Prudence. Uh, I ngā mana i ngā rei raurangatirama tēnā koutou kato. Ko Paula Tesserero tōku ingoa, ko Takuturangi Mahi he tumawaki mō Faikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People. Uh, Talofa Lava, uh, kia ora ana, warm Pacific, Greetings to everyone. Uh, thank you, Prudence, um, for your welcome and Namahi Kiakwe Taki for setting the foundations for this corridor and uh, later for closing us out and making sure uh, that we do this in the appropriate way. So I'm wearing a very dark navy t-shirt with a silver chain around my neck. I'm sitting in front of our um, pull-up banner that says Faikaha, the Ministry of Disabled People, uh, which is purple, the, the banner, uh, and I have short brown hair kind of swept back off my face. And my sign name is referenced by two fists moving in a forward direction like a bicycle uh, as I'm a cyclist. So firstly just thank you all for being back here. Um, this might be the first time you've engaged in one of these with me or you might have come to the previous one uh, but I really want to thank everybody for taking some time out at this time of the year just to connect in with us. I also want to acknowledge those of you who have shared your stories uh, frustrations and aspirations with the team and I at the last hui. Uh, those things matter and they help inform what we do here at Faikaha, particularly as we shape our work plan for next year. One of my top priorities since starting in the role has been getting around New Zealand in person and online, listening to the community, I've had many, many public engagements around the country, uh, hearing the voice directly of disabled people and their families. Met with all of our staff to understand more about the work uh, that we do at a detailed level. Met with peak bodies, provider groups and ministers. And that's given me a really good sense of the depth and breadth of the work that we do 
but actually the work that we really need to do moving forward. Recently, we marked the International Day for People with Disabilities, which was a good opportunity to reflect on what we've achieved, but how much more work there is to be done in Aotearoa to make us a truly inclusive country. So I'm conceptualizing our work into three main blocks of focus. The first is around building the foundations of Faikaha. Six months in, and three months for me as the chief executive, we're still a very new entity, still building our foundations and building our functions and ways of operating. Secondly, we're ensuring continuity of the disability support system and other core functions. Thirdly, we're leading transformation of the support system and over time, influencing the way that agencies do their work. We are moving on all three of those platforms, and I want to talk about each of those platforms, what we've done and what we plan to do. I can't cover everything in this short space of time, but I just want to connect with you and give you a sense of some of those things. Firstly, we are building Faikaha. In our first six months, we have progressed building our systems, our policies, our ways of operating, and starting to fill out our structure and confirm our leadership team. This will continue next year as they're all important foundational things for our organization. Thinking about the technology that we need, the systems that we need are really important also. Building our tripartite partnership, which Taki touched on, is vital for our success. Authentic, authentic partnering takes time, and it needs time spent on how it works and how the community is appropriately resourced to be at the table. I'm really pleased to have just recently confirmed the appointment of the Chief Advisor Māori who next year will be working in partnership to build our Titiriti or Waitangi framework, our tikanga principles, and helping us to get on the starting journey towards being a treaty-based organization. It's really important we get those things right now, and I'm really pleased to have our chief advisor uh, on board starting on the 19th of January, um, to help us do that really important foundational work for Faikaha as part of our tripartite approach and honouring us wanting to be a good treaty partner. Next year, we have to build our statement of intent. This is basically a detailed strategy confirming our approach over the coming years. It's important because it sets out what we intend to do and how our success will be measured. We then each year have to report to Parliament on that and front up and answer how we've performed. And also, obviously, part of that is reporting to our community. We look forward to developing that statement of intent in partnership. Yesterday, I advertised a Deputy Chief Executive Organisational Culture and that's an important role to add to our leadership team here, because that's a role which will early next year start shaping our people strategy, our recruitment strategy. We want to make sure that Faikaha is a great place to work and that we have the right kind of workforce here with the right kind of roles to support disability leadership, growth and capability development. You'll see vacancies coming up in the first part of next year, and I encourage you to apply for them. Next year, we will also be putting money into building community capacity, capability building, and leadership. And I'm really looking forward to that coming to fruition. The second platform I touched on is about ensuring continuity and improvement of disability support services and the other core functions that we have at Faikaha around policy development and stewarding change across government. 
We support more than 44,000 people on any given day. The number of people accessing our supports is increasing. And as such, we have work underway to develop a more sustainable way of funding the system. We know that long-standing pressures have been influenced by low unemployment, immigration, and increased demand for services. We are pleased to have just started developing a workforce strategy to address this, and we're working really closely with Te Whatu Ora, ACC, and other government agencies to make sure that we're being consistent in how we approach the development of that workforce. We also con contract with TIPO to provide a range of workforce initiatives. We're also looking at how we can take dedicated approaches to workforce availability, including things like centralised recruitment, ways of better supporting providers, and we're working with MB on immigration settings. We have also this year invested funding in reducing wait times and improving access to some services like child development services and there's much more work to be done there. In the past six months we've also confirmed that our more flexible approach for disabled people to engage family and whānau to provide supports is here to stay. That expanded flexibility was put in place as part of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic and it gave disabled people and our families more options about who could be paid to provide that support. We have listened to that feedback from whānau, carers, disabled people, tangata whaikaha Māori, who have told us that that flexible approach is what is needed. So I'm delighted that that flexible way of funding uh, will now be permanent. We also have a policy work program with existing commitments and we're working really hard to, uh, to stand up our policy team. Today we finished interviewing for our Deputy Chief Executive Policy and I'm really looking forward to being able to make an offer before Christmas. The policy work program is relatively large with some existing commitments. Next year, we have to report on the Disability Action Plan. We have to review the Fawai Ora National Pacifica Disability Plan. We have to work to prepare for the potential introduction of the accessibility legislation. We are looking at policy options for funding care by family members. And we are working to introduce the New Zealand Sign Language Amendment Bill with MSD. We're also making sure that we have, as part of establishing our permanent funding, uh, making sure we have what we need to run Faikaha successfully into the future. When we were established, we were given a certain amount of money and the governments asked us to make sure that we're really clear what the sustainable funding is that we need. And so we're doing a lot of work in that third platform that I touched on is around transformation. That's both in respect of disability support services that we provide and also influencing how other government agencies work. We're working on the disability support system model to meet the conditions for uh, the budget contingency drawdown. What that means is that the government has set aside a portion of funding, $100 million, and we have to show we have the right plans in place to access that funding. We know that people have been waiting a really long time for transformation of the system, and we will be using that funding to bring an Enabling Good Lives experience for more disabled people and their families. And we will be discussing the options for how to spend that money with ministers in February next year. We're also looking at how we establish what's called our system steward role. So already we are proactively engaging with government agencies across the board. We know and you know that agencies like education, 
employment, health, transport, housing, all make such a difference to the lives of disabled people and our families. And we have a really important role in influencing the way their work is done uh, to meet the needs and achieve better outcomes for us. Some of the things that we've been working on in that space is reviewing MSD's Youth Health Wellbeing Survey. The Ministry of Health's recent health survey results and the work required as part of the Mahi Aroha Working Group and Carers Strategy Action Plan. We've also been working on improving the availability and use of disability data. And I know that in, for many people that, that sounds um, uh, not particularly exciting, but actually it is so important that we have a much better understanding of data and evidence, because those things matter when it comes to understanding best solutions, and also it matters when it comes to seeking more funding. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of an update on some of the things we've done, but there's a lot more to do. I look forward next year to involving our partners and involving our community at large on thinking about things that we need to prioritise for the year ahead. I want to quickly touch on some of the things that I'm proud of us having delivered in the past six months. It's hard to believe that uh, many of us will be breaking soon for a well-deserved summer break. I've been in this role for three months, but Faikaha has been here for six months. This year, we had a responsibility to go to Geneva and listen to the um, advice from the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and people will have seen that the committee made 60 recommendations to New Zealand on how we can improve compliance with the CRPD. So in March next year, um, we'll be sending a paper to Cabinet for some decisions around how the government will respond to those recommendations. The other really important big uh, piece of work that I'm really proud of us contributing to is the Waitangi Tribunal Kopapa inquiries. And it's really important that we take our obligations towards Tangata Whakaha Māori really seriously and address the recommendations uh, that the tribunal will be making. And thirdly, we uh, gave evidence and information to the Royal Commission of Inquiry uh, into abuse in state care. And I just want to acknowledge to make sure their stories to the Royal Commission. Um, we have to make sure that we get, a, get ahead of those recommendations and really think about what we need to do to make sure that abuse and harm never happens uh, uh, our watch. So we're really committed to making sure that we work on safeguarding approaches, and that's one of the responsibility us to deliver under the violence and abuse uh, action plan across government. Those three really important inquiries and reviews have given us a really solid foundation for moving into next year and thinking about how the government responds to the recommendations from all three of those important reviews and inquiries and starts to prioritise meaningful change for disabled people and our families. Clearly, we won't be doing that alone. We'll be doing that with our partners and with a high degree of consultation around New Zealand. Finally, it would be remiss to not acknowledge COVID. It's still here and for many disabled people and our families, it continues to create concern and angst. So as we head away, uh, we'll make sure that on our website, we provide some key public health information and places that uh, you can go and numbers you can call for any support that you need. So Faikaha is still very much in our infancy. 
and next year across all of those three platforms we'll continue to build so much more to do to establish our processes our systems our structure and filling vacancies and secondly making sure we improve the services that we already deliver and thirdly start to transform those services so lots on and really important that we get it right so i wish you all a really uh, safe and enjoyable period uh, over the upcoming holiday i'm really looking forward to sharing more information with you in the early new year and i look forward to working with our community partners on thinking about uh, following the election following any election agencies are always required to brief the incoming government even if it's the same government and we all have to be thinking very carefully about the big strategic priorities that we put in front of an incoming government and that will be informed uh, by community so i'm going to stop talking now and i will put the information that i shared tonight up online and i'll hand back to you prudence for um questions Kia ora, Paula. I don't think any of us underestimate um, what a big job uh, it is at the ministry currently uh, with getting established and um, getting everything in place. Um, but we hope that that will continue to build um, in the new year for the betterment of us all. Um, so I see a few questions starting to come in and feel free to raise your hand electronically or if you're not able to do that, um, you can raise your hand physically if you would like to ask your question by voice or sign. Um, but Paula, we did have a couple of questions in advance that we had um, and hopefully you might be able to provide us with some answers for them. Um, the first one was how can we ensure the accessibility for New Zealanders bill is taken seriously? So I think there's perhaps a couple of ways of responding to that and thank you for whoever asked that question. I think firstly um, we have a really key role here at Faikaha to um, really advocate strongly, um, not just across central government, but also local government and in the private sector around removing barriers, um, improving accessibility for disabled people and our families. So we'll continue to do that. The legislation that's before the House um, will be uh, considered uh, by MPs uh, in the new year so hopefully a number of people will have made submissions on the legislation and the submissions in the summary of of sort of themes that that I'm aware of have certainly signaled some really clear messages about what disabled people and our families think uh, of the legislation and suggestions on ways to strengthen it and uh, improve it and so ultimately you know Faikaha will have a role in um, talking with the Ministry of Social Development who are leading that legislation at the moment uh, we'll have a key role in making sure that we bring the perspectives of our community in Faikaha to that process and then uh, whatever form the legislation is passed uh, we'll have a role in implementing that and making sure that uh, we do all we can um, so that actually everybody takes that legislation really seriously uh, and removes barriers. Thanks for that, Paula. Um, another question that we had in advance was how do you plan to ensure people with disabilities who have mental health issues get an appropriate standard of care? Yeah, it's a, a really good question, really fair question, and, and one we need to give a, um, um, really considerable 
weight to. So having seamless support across government is important and we've started work on that here. It's an ongoing piece of work with Te Whatu Ora and the Ministry of Health, so um, who, who have that sort of primary responsibility. Um, we've also started to co-commission and um, purchase services for people who are accessing both disability and mental health services, and we'll continue to look at uh, ways to do that and continue to work with yeah, Te Whatu Ora and the Ministry of Health who, who lead on that. So joining that up and trying to create yeah, seamless support and looking at people as an individual um, rather than sort of channels on which they access support is something we, you know, will be working really hard here to, to change for the future. Thank you. Um, so kind of following on from that, uh, what plans are in place to address the issues that are coming out of the Royal Commission of Inquiry, which states the care of people with disabilities and neurodivergence has been a catastrophic failure? Yeah, so much to learn from the Royal Commission. Uh, and when the Commission releases its uh, recommendations next year, the government will have to um, consider how it best responds to those. I think, you know, um, my expectation and, and aspiration is actually that any person or organisation providing supports and services to disabled people um, uh, now, whether that's in residential or community care, are really thinking about the lessons learned from the Royal Commission. But we've got that collective responsibility between us at Whaikaha and, um, and those we support. But I think next year is going to be a big year. I think I touched earlier on, on this, that the government is going to have to, um, the ministers will have to make decisions about responding to those recommendations and other really key recommendations affecting disabled people. So I don't have a perfect answer to that now, but next year um, when the commission releases its report, a lot of work's going to have to go into uh, addressing those recommendations. Mm. Thank you, Paula. I mean, I think the questions that we're seeing come through, there is a lot of overlap with responsibility of other ministries, and I um, acknowledge that you may not have a much of an answer for some of the questions that I will ask, um, but perhaps if you... Um, need to come back to that later you can just let us know and and those yep. can be included in the questions that are followed up on the website um yep. so this one's in relation to to fatal order um and it asks why is the age set at four years old for accessing the services they need within to fatal order does that uh it's a little bit difficult to answer prudence without understanding the type of services. What what I would suggest is is um, uh, if the person who asked that question wants to email the contact at Faikaha address, we could, with a bit more specificity, we could probably answer that more fully. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, I think this is quite a good question, really, and I know that there's been a lot of uh, confusion in the community over the years about the development of Enabling Good Lives. But the question is, why is Enabling Good Lives still taking time to launch when in reality it's been running for years? Yeah, great question. Um, so there's a, a couple of ways to talk about Enabling good lives. One is people will definitely be aware of the three pilot sites um, in the Waikato, Mid-Central and in Christchurch, where um, an approach um, to enabling good lives was taken and slightly different in all three sites. And where um, 
we're really fortunate that we, you know, have all, you know, evaluated all of those sites and got, you know, really good um, lessons and um, indicators of, of success. So those pilots um, and, and those uh, ways of working remain in place. Um, the other important thing about an Enabling Good Lives approach is that it's not necessarily about a site or a place. Actually, everybody who is engaging with disabled people in our families, any uh, provider, any organization has a, a responsibility to apply the Enabling Good Lives principles to the way in which they work with disabled people. And I think one of the opportunities we've got at Whaikaha uh, next year and with our community is actually to be raising awareness of those principles at every level. So government agency level um, and you know, local government, um, working with providers to continue raising that awareness uh, and to support the community to build their local infrastructure and raise awareness of enabling good lives at the local level. And then just finally, I touched before, Prudence, on the $100 million that government have set aside. So Cabinet have been really clear um, in decisions made that that funding uh, is about bringing the enabling good lives experience to more people. And the $100 million uh, sounds a lot of money, um, but it's a start. And... So what we'll be doing is taking options to ministers in February for them to make some choices about how that money will be applied next year. And then alongside that, we'll be working on a much um, a bigger case for further investment and taking that approach to more people in the following years. So it's a bit of a phased approach. Mm. Thanks for explaining that, Paula. I hope that's answered some of the question um, that people have. Um, now, somebody here talks about the Disability Issues Commission, but I think maybe they're talking about the Office for Disability Issues. Um, and they say, it seems that we are going around in circles. Why did we have the... Disability Issues Commission, which has been running for years, why can't you look at what they've already bought on board? So I wondered, assuming that it is about ODI, um, I wondered if you can just explain a bit about the place of ODI in relation to the ministry? Sure. So the Office of Disability Issues is part of Faikaha now. It used to sit in the Ministry of Social Development and it had a core responsibility of working across agencies to um, provide advice on cabinet papers going up to ministers, uh, working with disabled people's organisations um, and advising um, government agencies. But it was rel a relatively small um, team and so that team is now part of Waikaha but it also sits within a larger group of um, people who will be doing the policy work and really um, I guess increasing hopefully increasing um, the influence that we can have across government. The other important thing about Waikaha is to remember that um, uh, we have a very big service delivery operation as part of um, our agency. And that sets us apart from other population agencies. You know, we're the only one with a, a big service delivery um, part of our organisation. And that came from the old Ministry of Health. And that was part of the health and disability reforms. But it was part of recognizing that actually disability is not, not a health issue. You know, it's a, it's a whole of life, all of life journey. And so the establishment of Faikaha is to recognize that um, and give us responsibility for providing those operational supports, but also strengthening the role that the Office of Disability Issues 
um, played really well across government, but it's about increasing that voice and maximising those opportunities of influence across government. Thank you for that, Paula. Um, so I think um, this question is about trust. Um, and I know that you know uh, that disabled people have less trust in the system generally. Um, there's research on that and statistics about that. So Denise says, it's hard to trust anything that is said after years of abuse and neglect. How do you plan to rebuild the trust? I think one of the things I often say um, when I speak to different audiences is, you know, I, I made a deliberate choice to take on this role um, as a disabled leader. And, you know, I've done roles in the past in our sector with the most immediate one being around advocacy. And those five years in, in that role gave me a really deep appreciation of lack of trust, frustration, pain, hurt, trauma, um, desperation, all of those things that exist in our community. And, you know, it wasn't an easy decision to come into this role, but it was important for me as a disabled person to put myself forward, take this role and try and work within the system to bring about the change that we all want. And that's what I'm committed to doing. And, you know, the community will hold us to account over the coming years as to whether we have done that or not. But most certainly as a disabled person, it's visceral to me that we achieve. And we're not going to get it right overnight. Uh, we're still very early on as an agency, but I'm very committed as is the team um, to get this, this right and, and building trust, um, you know, doesn't happen overnight, it takes a long time to build trust in what happens. Yeah, thank you, Paula. I think that um, it's uh, it, it does take a long time and um, so we can't, we're not going to automatically trust systems, are we, when we've been let down for by systems for so long. So, I mean, I think things like this help to build some trust and that engagement with community um, and hopefully over time we can we can build that. Um, the next question sort of relates to the differences um, real or perceived um, between ACC and other um, funding for disability support services. So it says, why does ACC get different funding from disabilities? Why do they get more? Yeah, um, really good question. And it's been a, um, a big topic of conversation over many years, you know, that, that inequity between the two systems. I mean, fundamentally, um, there are different legislative frameworks for them, for them both. And I think, you know, that's a really big and important conversation that needs to be had uh, with, with ministers um, about, about those differences. And, you know, that creates real challenges for many in our community where um, the, the supports we get, you know, are, are determined by the cause of impairment. And, um, you know, we know the, the difficulties that that creates, and I think that's a, you know, one of those big strategic discussions um, with ministers and, and you know, and, and community advocacy around that as well. But, you know, we also want to make sure we try and close those gaps uh, as much as, as possible as well. Yeah, I mean, I think this question that has been posed um, really talks to that and we hear from the community often. Um, and I suppose from the community's point of view, it doesn't really matter where your impairment experience come from. Yeah. Um, that doesn't uh, necessarily make a huge difference to what your needs are. You just need support to have your needs met um, and, and we shouldn't have to worry about different systems or differences in those systems. 
Um, please keep your questions coming. And if anyone would like to ask a question themselves verbally, please just raise your um, electronic hand, which you can do by clicking on reactions and the raise hand button, um, or you can raise it physically, but I might take a little longer to notice that. Um, so I do have another question here. I'm not entirely clear exactly what it's talking about, but you might. Have you got a fire? Um, we have to leave the building. Evacuate the building using the nearest fire exit. Paula, thank you for your time today. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, uh, that that has been cut short. Um, <laughs> Paula um, will be scheduling more of these in the new year. Um, and I thank everybody for coming today. Um, we will need to cut it short because obviously um, Paula is the the main person that we want to talk to in this. Um, but we will he, um, leave the Zoom and the chat open for another 15 minutes or so, providing that we can, assuming the people who can do that are not in the building with Paula. Um, but Taki, could I ask you to close early uh, in Karakia? Uh, unu here, unu here. Unu here te reo rongo mai fiti o tēnei hui, o tēnei wānanga, waiho ke eri, waiho ke oi, tihei, mauri ora. Kia ora. Thank you everyone, go well, and we will see you in the new year. <laughs>